I'm already going to do that joke. I'm already going to do that joke. Okay, I'm sorry. I... I've got a joke about microtransaction, and it was going to be about my tiny, tiny, pointless, withered penis. It's, it's not withered. <laughs> Microtransactions, we're talking about those, which is a subject we don't often tackle on the Jimquisition. Uh, on, on the subject of tackle, mine is fine. Uh, I just want to assure you all, it is disappointingly average. Uh, adequate. It is adequate, see? I've got a third party review. It's adequate penis. Resident Evil 4's remake is quite adequate as well. In fact, it's very good. But I tell you what isn't, is the microtransactions that they added, that a whole bunch of people are defending. I, this, what is this new thing? Right? That I've seen people come up with, which, oh, they're microtransactions for a single player. That's not so bad. When did that become a new okay thing? When was it decided? Because I wasn't part of that meeting. I wasn't even given the minutes for, for the meeting where it was decided that microtransactions are okay if they're quote unquote just in a single player campaign. What the fuck is that? To say nothing of the people who after all these years of debunking defenses of microtransactions are saying, well Capcom's gotta make some money somehow. Last I checked, they're selling the game for money. So anyway, we're talking about microtransactions this week, not my dick. Aww. It's time to squirt my polemic paste deep into the quivering cavity of controversy, so grab a spoon and slurp it up, you fucking paste twats! <coughs> Resident Evil 4's remake is very good. Very good indeed. Is it as good as the original? Maybe I'm just old-fashioned, in addition to being old, but I must say it doesn't have quite the charm of the original. It's scarier, it's modernised, it's got more content, but it's not as humorous, not as memorable, and absolutely positively nowhere near as camp. That's the important thing. Resident Evil 4 was camper than a van. It was still spooky, but its joyous embrace of action movie cliches and silly one-liners was just bloody entertaining. For me, the dorky lines, cheeky banter between Leon and the antagonists, and the almost Metal Gear Solid-esque commitment to its own bullshit was always THE distinguishing feature of Resident Evil 4. Now, it could be argued that we don't need the remake to be any of that, since we already have it. And that's very valid. I think the remake is in general a great game, one that doesn't replace the original, but provides an alternative take. And that's just fine. If you ask to me which of the two I prefer, though, it's gonna be the game that has this shit. No way, Leon. Way? <laughs> I knew you'd be fine if you landed on your butt. I'm starting to get worried. Don't you mean lonely? Rain or shine, you're going down. Sounds more like an alien invasion if you ask me. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Hey, is that a dog? I've been expecting you, my brethren. No thanks, bro. Sadler, you're small time. Hmm. Where's the satisfying sound of one's impalement? Sorry to hear that. I'm sending you a playing manual. Well, I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics, too. How rude! Crappy script. It should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, oh. <laughs> Where's everyone going? Bingo? There's one other vitally important distinction between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 4 Remake that'll see me eternally favour the classic. The original Resident Evil 4 didn't have fucking microtransactions. What are you buying? Now, until a few days ago, this was not a factor, for indeed Resident Evil 4 Remake didn't have microtransactions either. Capcom, the sly devil's cockens that they are, didn't launch RE4 Remake with the blasted things. They waited. They waited until the game reviews were all published. They waited until 4 million people had bought it. They waited weeks before smuggling them into the game alongside the release of an update that added the beloved Horde-style mercenaries mode. The microtransactions are unrelated to the mercenaries, which I have to say is pretty bloody fun. No, 
The microtransactions pertain to the single-player campaign, offering paid upgrades that could be quite snarkily described as pay-to-win. Basically, starting at prices of $2.99, you can buy special upgrade tickets that allow you to obtain any weapon's final upgrade regardless of how upgraded it otherwise is. Normally, you have to buy a gun's stat improvements with in-game cash one by one until it's fully upgraded, at which point a final exclusive upgrade is unlocked and you can buy it at a high price. An upgrade ticket fast tracks you to that final upgrade, giving it to you for free at any point in your chosen weapon's progress. It doesn't fully upgrade the weapon, you'll still have to finish that job, but with final upgrades, mostly offering flat damage boosts or otherwise powerful enhancements, getting it early is a huge difference maker for any given gun. Now you can get these tickets in game, but doing so is such a grind that I'm actually annoyed I didn't see all of this coming. You can't buy tickets from the merchant. You have to trade spinels for... Spinels? Spinels? For them. I've never actually looked up how to, uh, how to pronounce that. Anyway, you have to trade those. An extra little currency that is given in batches of two to five for completing side quests or very, very rarely found individually while playing. Now, most items that can be traded for using Spin Isles, such as treasure maps, rare consumables, or sellable valuables, cost anywhere between three and five of them, while higher cost items, like exclusive guns, can cost a princely ten. Actually, I think I got that math wrong. I think it's... I think it's like, there's a gun that's five, and another that I think was eight, and a tachier case is like 12. And then the, the, the point is, is the tickets are a lot, as we're about to discuss. Given the rate at which you earn the currency, these prices are pretty well balanced. The tickets, however, cost either 30 or 40 splimpidums, a price that requires saving up to such a degree that you'd have to really deny yourself other useful stuff to get them. Like I said, I'm pissed I didn't see it coming. The ticket prices felt exorbitant while playing to the point where it genuinely struck me as oddly imbalanced. Sure, for what they do they should be somewhat costly, but 30? I fully played the campaign, made it several hours into New Game Plus, did every side quest except that one I forgot where you go back and kill the dog, not that one, and during that time I was able to buy one ticket. And while I did trade Spinlay for other things, in order to just get that one, I had to hold off on other stuff first. It wasn't a huge deal, but it seemed odd. I should have guessed. I'm cynical enough and I've made the game industry sneaky bullshit my business for long enough that the suspicion should have crossed my mind. Looking back, especially given Capcom's predilection for utterly contrived microtransactions, it was clitting obvious. What's truly gotten to me this week, however, wasn't Capcom doing a thing that I wouldn't put past them, but the creepy number of people lining up to pathetically defend this shit. In a true reminder that my years of work in the field of industry bullshit is futile and that over a decade of comprehensive Comprehensive arguments will ultimately fall on a world of willfully blocked ears seeing the same old debunked defences and corporate jizz guzzling was rather fucking disheartening. Oh these are fine, just ignore them, stop whining, just grind if you don't want to pay. It's just optional, listen to me while I condescendingly do game publishers jobs for them by parroting their discredited propaganda verbatim like unpaid fucking marketing reps. It's not a direct quote, but honestly the actual things people have said are borderline unbearable in just how smarmy, how ignorant and just how plain fucking wrong they are, with a smugness that appears directly proportional to said wrongness in a beautiful example of the Dunning-Kruger effect. There are no good microtransactions. It doesn't matter how inconsequential they are, it doesn't matter how ethical they're trying to appear, an economy based in psychological manipulation that has a history of profiting via the targeted exploitation of neurodivergent players is inherently predatory, ableist and just plain disgusting. By far the most common argument in favour of these microtransactions are this isn't so bad. That mostly seems to be the sum fucking total of that argument too. It's not so bad. I mean, if you want to debate from a point of pure relativity, sure. In comparison to other examples, I'll grant you it's not so bad. It's not fully gating content behind a paywall. It's not gambling-based loot boxes. It's not among the most extreme examples of vulturine profiteering we've seen over the years, but I'm not going to indulge the fallacious suggestion that not bad is the same as good. Not bad 
isn't good and no microtransactions are good because there are no good microtransactions. Sure, this is different than FIFA's downright sick, dangerous grift, but I'll tell you what it's not different than the slimy little time saver boosts hawked by the likes of Ubisoft. The little purchases that allow players to, as companies love to say, skip the grind. The grind these companies deliberately designed and could have not included in the first place. Time saver microtransactions are when game companies sell you a solution to a problem they created for the sole reason of selling you a solution. It's a tacit admission by said company that they made a game less fun on purpose, that they deliberately made an aspect of the game so tedious and shit that it's literally worth paying money to play it less. It should be seen as an instant mark against a video game, but the industry's propaganda mill has been so insistent in its spin that we're still supposed to think this is a positive thing in some sort of perverse opposite day charade. We're supposed to think that skip the grind is a good excuse and not sheer self-indictment. As I've thoroughly explained in previous work, time saver microtransactions are actually among the more insidious ones despite how much they're marketed as among the most benign. They prey upon more impulsive, less patient players, and that makes autistic gamers and or gamers with ADHD especially vulnerable to them. If you're neurotypical, it's easy to shrug this all off by simply saying just don't buy them, but like I've said before, if you've never been tempted by microtransactions, Congratulations, you're not the one they're preying on. Hard to feel targeted if you're not the target. Oh, but if publishers do ever find a way to get under your skin, mark my words, they will. Besides which, the alleged stupidity and uselessness of Resident Evil 4 Remake's particular microtransactions isn't the defence people think it is either. See, some have tried to say these premium tickets are okay because of how little you need them, that getting a gun's final upgrade is easy enough to do using in-game currency, and it only gets easier if you use only a small number of weapons to begin with. It's the same argument I saw defending the little purchases in Devil May Cry 5, my criticism of which pissed off Capcom simps to such a degree, some of them still whine about the time I dared say it was a shitty move for a game I ultimately loved. But okay, let's go with the idea, shall we? Let's go with the idea that the microtransactions in Resident Evil 4 Remake are so completely fucking unnecessary as to be pointless. Let's say they're so easy to ignore that their inclusion is such a non-factor, they might as well not be there. Okay, so why are they there then? Because if you ask me, selling something useless, pointless and wholly unnecessary is an act I'd quite honestly call a fucking scam. If you think that the microtransactions are worthless, you're saying Capcom's selling a bill of goods, therefore you have to logically admit that Capcom is outright swindling anybody who buys them. Now please, tell me, how is that any better? How is it something we should be okay with? Try to answer that and stay fashionable. Oh, DMC5 just sold you currency that the campaign already drowns you in. That's not so bad. Yes, that is bad. That's a con, for God's sake. The way Capcom is doing it is akin to selling river water to a trout. It's selling snow to a yeti. It's selling incompetence to Bethesda. That's potentially even more of a swindle than if they sold you a currency you couldn't get in-game. At least that would have some twisted sense of contrived worth. Microtransactions are either useful enough that their inclusion is a paywalling, railroading racket, or useless enough that their inclusion is a spurious, fraudulent rip-off. There is no good way to spin it, because there are no good microtransactions. Are you getting the point now? The point is that there ain't no attempt to spin this shit that I won't see through. In case you were wondering, no, you really can't win with me on this. You can stick up for Capcom, you can go after me, but there's not a millimeter of ground I'd begin to consider conceding to your nonsense. There is nothing you can say in favor of Capcom's fuckery that will convince me since I'm so predisposed to being unconvinced. In fact, I'm happy to admit that I will never engage in a discussion about the merits of in-app purchases in good faith, because they are so inherently, so comprehensively meritless that admitting my own bad faith, that luxuriating in the broadcast of my own predisposed bias does nothing to make my arguments less credible because they're just that damn Good. Returning to the sheer timing of these transactions implementation, waiting until post-launch to slither them in, has always been and will always be a straight-up dick move. It's pure rat 
fuckery. There are people who really don't want to buy video games with microtransactions in them. For whatever reason, there are critics and influencers who feel a responsibility to let their audiences know when a game has them or outright won't recommend such games and it really lays an ethical dilemma at their feet when they've already made a recommendation. There are the aforementioned neurodivergent people who actively avoid such games to avoid exploitation attempts. I mean, if you publish a game and sell it to people who are vulnerable to microtransactions and you let them get really, really invested in said game before springing said microtransactions on them, you're essentially an ambush predator. It was rightly criticised when Activision pulled this with Crash Team Racing. It's just as right to criticise it here, despite how much more we like Capcom. I'll tell you another fucked thing that's shit because it's a load of shitted fuck. In doing this, Capcom has gone and tainted one of the greatest contributions to horror gaming lore that RE4 ever made, the merchant himself. Over here, stranger. Ever since he first told strangers he had summit that moid interest him, the unnamed weapons dealer who came to be known simply as The Merchant has captured players' imaginations. <laughs> Thank you. His role in the story was practically inconsequential, but his weird pirate voice, the fact everything he said was quotable as hell, and the sheer mystery around him easily ranked him among the entire series' most memorable characters. Who is he? Why does his eyes suggest he's infected with the same plague as Parasite as Leon's enemies? How does he manage to stay ahead of the player and set up shop in the most dangerous of places? Just where the hell did he go after Resident Evil 4 since he was never seen again? So beloved was he, and so conspicuous was his absence in all future games, that even I wondered if the brilliant character would ever return, even in the RE4 remake, considering how much more serious it's become. He did. And I was delighted, and even though he doesn't sound as funny, even if he's not quite the same, it was glorious to see the merchant back, and I find the new version very genuinely lovable. Then Capcom went and fucking tied microtransactions to the guy. A character I love, and a business model I loathe. Two disparate flavours that taste fucking horrible together. Yeah, I love video games. Yeah. Right, that'll do it, I reckon. Um, just grim, really, just seeing the amount of people defending this shit still after all these years, using arguments that we've long since demolished. But that's why this show keeps ticking, whether or not you want it to. That'll do it for me. Uh, next couple wrestling dates, if you do want to see me live doing my choke slams, is April 22nd in Preston, that's PCW, May 12th in Liverpool, that's a city debut, that's Effie's Big Gay Brunch. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of others that I can't remember off the top of my head because I've got ad uh, But until next time, the only thing you really have to remember is that you must thank God for me.